Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Medalli of Metro Health Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio. This talk is going to be a little bit boring, but I think very important for any person seeking female to male top surgery. This means removal of the breast to take a female chest and make a male chest. Many of you have done research on the internet and you have a lot of uh, your questions already answered. So this is going to describe the two different types of surgery and hopefully answer some final questions that you might have. There are essentially two types of surgery. There are surgery for patients who have large breasts, and this schematic here on your left is an example of a large breast. And then the schematic here on the right is an example of a small breast. When I say small, A to small B cup, here full B to D and beyond. There's two different types of procedures. So let me start with the procedure if the patient is large breasted. If the patient is large breasted, there's not an easy solution to minimize scars. The operation is called double incision or elliptical incision, mastectomy with free nipple and areola grafting. What I do is I'm going to make an incision underneath the breast here and then overneath, over the breast right there. The breast gets removed. Additionally, breast tissue under the chest wall also gets removed. I do liposuction here and I do liposuction here to remove things that are called dog ears. What is a dog ear? When you take an ellipse and closes a straight line, you see what happens to my fingers? They push out. You get bunching of the tissue there, and you get bunching of the tissue here. Liposuction diminishes that bunching of the tissue. Several months after the surgery, that bunching of tissue goes down even more, and if it needs to be revised, which it can be, it almost never needs to go back to the OR. It can be done with just a little bit of local anesthesia in the clinic. Once this tissue is removed, I will also take an areolar graft, which is about 25 to 30 millimeters in diameter, which is the diameter of a normal male areola, and I'll take a nipple graft, a portion of the nipple, so that I only have a small piece of nipple as opposed to a large nipple. These grafts are placed off to the side. I then make sure nothing is bleeding. I put something called a drain, which is a silicone rubber tube, and it goes underneath the skin, and it sits in the chest wall and it stays there for about five to seven days. The drain goes underneath the chest wall. I then close the incision with dissolvable sutures so that nothing needs to be removed. I then sit the patient up. Me and the nurses gather at the foot of the bed and I look and I measure to make sure where should the nipple and the areola go. And in men, they need to be low down on the chest wall and lateral, not high and central. I then sit the patient back down again take off the skin there and sew the areola on. So what I'm going to do is, if I show here, now the incision is closed. I place the areola on the chest wall, several centimeters above the incision. I then make a little hole in the areola and I put the nipple graft there. You have, you have dissolvable sutures here, dissolvable sutures there. A compression dressing goes on. A chest vest goes on, and this is worn for five to seven days, and nothing is done. When you come back to my clinic, I take everything off, and we look, and usually everything looks fine. The notes about this operation, you end up with a long scar here. The nipple and the areola, because of the grafts, have no nerve supply, so they are almost always insensate. Every once in a while, you do get some sensation back. There's going to be some scabby healing of the graft, where you might have some peeling of the skin. You might have some peeling of the uh, nipple and the areola. If you're African American or dark skin, you might also have some depigmentation of the nipple and the areola graft. This will resolve, but it may take six to 12 months. And what you see is what you get, both with the scar and with the nipple and the areola, for up to a year. In the worst case scenario, you may need a little bit of tattooing of the areola to resolve some of the pigment deficiencies. Now, let's go to this side. When I have a small breasted patient, and even though this is a large picture, pretend this is an A or a small B cup sized breast with a large areola and a nipple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cookie cutter and I'm gonna put it around the areola like this. And again, it's 25 to 30 millimeters in diameter. I'm then gonna measure out about two centimeters and I'm gonna make another cut like that. This intervening skin gets de-epithelialized or removed. I leave the dermis 
the underlying structure of the skin intact, and that provides the blood supply to the nipple and the areola. Right there. It is not a great blood supply, and every once in a while, you can have partial loss of the nipple and the areola. For the most part, it works well. Once I've removed the skin, I'm going to make an incision right about here. Okay? And that marker isn't working very well. I'm going to make an incision right about there, and I'm going to go underneath, and with a light retractor and with scissors, I'm going to remove all the breast tissue all the way out here. I also do liposuction here and here again to try and keep things nicely contoured on the whole chest wall. Once all the breast tissue is removed, I look very carefully for anything bleeding. I put a drain in. I close this little incision up, and then I'm going to do something called a purse string suture. Imagine it as a bag with a drawstring. You have an open space. The drawstring string cinches tight, and it cinches it down to a smaller diameter. This purse string is going to go all the way around this incision, and it's going to cinch this outer skin down to the smaller areola. The end result is going to be an areola that looks somewhat irregular with bunching up of the tissue and scalloping of the edges. Now this settles down to a large degree over the course of the next three to six months. It doesn't always settle down completely. You have to be aware that the scar around the areola is going to make it look not like a normal areola. So with either operation, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You are going to get scars. Sometimes, and this is, this is the, the nipple there, sometimes uh, I have in the past, because there's been extra tissue, made an extension of an incision there, and that's called like a lollipop, or even this, which is sort of an inverted T incision. I find that once you reach this point, that you're probably better off just getting a straight line of the nipple and the areola. This is an easier operation for me to control and to get a better cosmetic result. This operation, you have plenty of scars, and so, you know, it becomes a difference that makes no difference. So at this point, I find that if you're not a good candidate for just the periareolar procedure, then you probably should get the double incision. I don't really have patients who are unhappy with this long scar as long as their chest is flat and they have a good contour. There's a whole variety of reasons to get scars on your chest, right? And so I think it's better to have a good contour and to have good size of the nipple and the areola that's well controlled than to have less of a scar but to have maybe a wide and irregular areola. That being said, for some patients, this is the right operation. What are the risks of this surgery? I've never admitted anyone overnight. I've never given anyone a blood transfusion. This operation should only take two hours. If you see another doctor and they say it's going to take four hours, go somewhere else. You should not have to stay overnight for this operation. Now, there's always a risk of bleeding. Not of bleeding to death, but of getting a collection of blood underneath the skin of the chest wall. If this happens, in the worst case scenario, I might have to take you back to the OR, find out what's bleeding, evacuate the blood, and then close the skin. Even in that case, I can usually send you home or to your hotel room. Right? You should not need a blood transfusion or need to stay overnight. Other things, you can have abnormal or hypertrophic scarring in either one of these scars, and we've discussed that. You can have some partial loss of the nipple and the areola, and usually you just let that heal, and then we deal, with the, we deal with it later. Maybe you need some revisions, maybe you need some tattooing. In general, this is a safe operation, it's an effective operation, and I feel that my patients are all very satisfied with the procedure. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. My website is www.clevelandplasticsurgery.com. That's one word. Or you can call me or email me at dmedali, D-M-E-D-A-L-I-E, at metrohealth.com. Metrohealth is, again, one word. Thanks again.